How do you feel about not being able to play a second set? Uh, I mean, it was just obviously unfortunate that he has to retire. You never want to have anything bad like that happen to another guy. Um, I felt like I was playing playing well and serving well, so I was in a, in a pretty good position there. Um, you know, I hope he has a speedy recovery, and I just want to keep trying to keep my momentum going into the next round. You kept him on the move at the start of that second set. Was that something you wanted to do, knowing that he was getting he was having some problems? Yeah, I mean, once I got the break in the first game of the second set, um, I was able to relax a little bit, and I actually um, I had a tough service game in my in my service game, and I knew that I wanted to, you know, when someone takes a medical timeout, you want to try to get on top and, and, uh, and see what you you can do as far as getting in control. And so I was just focused on trying to control everything I could, and I was able to able to get through. Isner said that you think you can beat anyone. That you had that attitude going in. Uh, what do you think about everyone kind of knowing that that's your attitude going in? <laughs> well, I think that John has the same attitude too. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, you know, anyone that's played a high level competitive sport. Um, most guys that have been really successful doing it anyways have had that attitude, and so. Um, you know, I know John really well. We played Davis Cup together. I've watched him win some really big matches this year. I've been there um, training with him a lot. We get along well, and you know he knows my game. I know his game. It's going to be a really fun match tomorrow. Spent a lot of time over here after the match running and stuff. Is that just you're so prepared to play you know, a two-hour match or something, you just kind of need to burn off that energy? Or? Well, you know, you just want to try to stay in the best shape as possible. I mean, it's a long season, and your body being fit and strong is, uh, is the most important thing. And we were going to do that today, whether or not it was a quick match or a long match. We have, you know, we have certain days that we have to do extra stuff to make sure my body stays strong. And you know, the you know, the good news is is having someone here like the guy Brett that helps me out. You know, he can do that stuff, but then we do like a really long uh, you know, cool down and, and stretching afterwards. So regardless of what we do, I, I never wake up too sore or feeling too bad because we do all the right preparation and recovery stuff. So it allows me to have a little bit of an extra edge when I can get in some extra work. Save a lot of break points today. How, how big are those when you can fight those off? How much money does that give you? Well, it's, a, it's great because, you know, you when you have those games, everyone's going to have times in the match where they get hot and start making a big push. And he had some some games where, you know, he had some big shots, had some good forehands, and I was able to uh, to place my serves well and hit good spots whenever I was down some some break points. I hit one really good passing shot. I remember to save a break point in, at the end of the first set. And uh, you know, those things are a fraction of stuff that can go either way. But you just you try to do your best to, to you know to make them swing your way. And you just whenever you have things to go your way, you try to hold on to it and run with it. Most of your service games in the first set, you're kind of rolling, but then that last one, he, he wouldn't go down easy. Does that get frustrating at all when you're rolling and all of a sudden he's Well, you know, he's, he's a very timing, rhythm-oriented guy. And sometimes, you know, he's not gonna he's not gonna stop swinging if he's missing. So I didn't necessarily play a terrible service game there. I mean, he clocked a few returns, and he, he was able to get a hold of a couple of them. Um, I remember the first one I lost, I hit an ace, then he put a return on the baseline, another forehand winner, and just like, next thing you know, I'm down 15-30, 15-40, and he, I haven't played really any bad points, but he's hit some good shots, and at that point, you just take a step back, and you try to restart the game in your head, and, uh, and hit your spots, and I was able to, and that's why it was, uh, it kind of went my way. You've been able to stay really calm on board this is that something you're working on? I know in the past you've had some, you yeah. know, get emotional out there. Well, this this whole year has been a lot better for me, yeah. and uh, I don't think it's any secret why I've started playing better and had more success and, and doing my best tennis right now mm -hmm. because of it. Um, at the beginning of the year, I wanted to to control that side of things a lot better than I had in the past, and I've done a better job at it. I'm still getting better, and I'm still improving, and. Um, I think I'll have a I have hiccups here and there, but for the most part, it's been a lot better, and, and I hope to continue to improve on it. How different are the expectations that you've been setting for yourself year to year versus last year, for example? Well, like like she said earlier, I, I kind of try to approach every match with the expectation of winning, and usually each tournament I go into, I'm not really scared of where I'm going to put in the draw. So. I try to just take every day as it comes, one at a time and one match at a time, and not necessarily put a ranking or, or a tournament-based goal on myself because I honestly believe 
if I play well, I can beat anyone and I can win any tournament if I'm playing that well because I have that sort of confidence in myself. And so um, that's why, you know, I just try to take it one at a time and you just keep your fingers crossed and hope it clicks when it, you know, as soon as possible. How much does this help you for the Olympics coming kind of up? It's huge, you know, to be able to play another tournament on grass and have uh, another good grass court result. Um, I'm feeling really good, really confident going into uh, going into London. Hopefully, I can play well. What are you most excited about in London? Probably just representing the country, yeah. being over on such a big and such a um, you know well-known stage like the Olympics. I'm trying to to do the best I can, do uh, my family, all my friends, everyone over here that's watching, and hopefully, you know, make everybody proud. Have you gotten the, the outfits yet? Not yet, Not yet but okay. um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, <laughs> I saw some pictures of them. I heard not good things so far. Yeah, the hats, will, the hats okay. are interesting. I don't wear so. hats anyway. Okay, so well. Right. <laughs> are there are there sports you're excited about seeing? I want to see the basketball if I can. Um, maybe get over the gymnastics. I like watching that. Um, and that's uh, that's about it. That's all I got in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks.